Hello everybody! Today there is no gameplay video. Instead I like to show you how I create the schedules for Tower 3D Pro. Uh, I don't do that without a sort of uh, hidden agenda, but we will get to that later. I also will not call this a tutorial, uh, even though it basically is a tutorial, just because there already is a tutorial video uh, created by the user the Red Lizard 2 on YouTube. Uh, just type in Tower 3D tutorial, maybe the word schedule or schedules, and you will find this video. As you see, he's using a text editor to edit and create the schedules. I will do just the same, but of course you can also use uh, any sort of Office software like uh, Microsoft Office uh, Excel or in my case, if we switch over to the second monitor, I'm using LibreOffice Calc. Uh, there's also OpenOffice and maybe a couple of programs more. Uh, if you're using uh, an Office uh, program, then you simply create your schedule here. Let's say we're just doing one flight. Um, maybe it's from Boston to LAX. Let's say it's an Airbus 320, um, it's a Delta flight, the flight number is 1234, the flight will arrive in Los Angeles at noon, uh, to this noon hour we will talk later about it. Um, this schedule will spawn at let's say 1450 here's a one we also get to that later and it will stay a delta flight the only thing you have to do right now is to save it as a text file the easiest way i think is uh, to use a CSV format. Let's give it a proper name. It's KBOSS for Boston and it's a schedule file. As a container we will not use CSV, uh, we are just using a plain text file. I will take here this uh, filter settings um, just to show you what to use. Uh, as a character set, any Latin set will do. Uh, I will go with this uh, Vin Latin, but you can also choose uh, different types. You can choose an ISO type or maybe a Unicode type, UTF-8 or whatever you like, as long as there are Latin characters in it. As a separator or field delimiter, you simply use a comma and then you can save it. As you see, here it creates a schedule file for us and when we open it, this is already a proper schedule. Before we start, we have to do some preparation. Uh, the schedule file we don't need anymore. I created a schedule folder. Normally I would name it, uh, yeah, in this case, uh, KBOSS or Boston, the time, if it's a clear out schedule or full day schedule. But for this example, schedule will do. And in here I will create two folders. One is named KBOSS. Um, this is the ICAO code for, for Boston Logan International. And I will use a folder called original. Uh, so the original looks good. In the original folder, I will copy the original text files from the game. I have a shortcut here. I'm using the Steam version, so for me it is uh, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Tower 3D Pro. If you're using um, the version from the website, then it will be most likely Fielder, 
and then Tower 3D Pro, or if you don't use the Pro version, then just Tower 3D. In here we will find this Extensions folder, and there are the Airfields folder, and then all the airports. Uh, in our case, it is the Cables folder that is of interest. I will now copy all these text files into the original folder and also in the cables folder. If I mess things up, I can simply use these files, copy them over to the game directory and everything should be fine again. I don't want to touch this folder again, so I will make a copy of it. And I can close this, whatever it is called, window. <laughs> um, yeah, we are prepared, almost. Uh, one thing we have to do, or I normally do, I will delete all the data from the files, mostly. And save them so I have blank files. It would be more convenient to have them already prepared, so to have a master set of these files. But I always forget. In the schedules file, I left two lines. Uh, one is in arriving flight and one is in departing flight. I will now use access for the airport code, the airplane code or aircraft code, the airline code, flight number, and here again it's the airline code. I know I want to create a schedule for 8 a.m. so I will type it in here, also in here. And now I have a yeah, kind of sample I can copy and fill with information. I should use two axes more for the flight number or the numeric identifier. And we are almost good to go. Um, the last file is the terminal file and here I just copy over all this information and delete all the airlines. So since this is prepared, we can now fill our schedule with uh, flights. Here we are on the flightradar24.com website and since this is a schedule for Boston, we will type in the ICAO code, which is KBOSS. And here we are. Since we don't want to track single flights, but get a sort of a flight plan or a, yeah, basically a schedule, um, we click on more. And here I will open up the arrivals and the departures in separate tabs. For the arrivals, um, yeah, you just need to know two things. Um, the first is, uh, it's better to load earlier flights. Um, because um, the moment the flights are landed, I can show you an example for the scare flight, Cape Air. Um, here is the IATA uh, identifier, or IATA. Um, which is for International Air Transport Association, which basically covers all the, the business uh, field of air traffic. And 
the other thing, if you click on it and click here on play, uh, is the uh, ICAO code for International Civil Aviation Organization, or that is what it stands for. Um, they are technically, not technically, they are just covering the technical field of aviation. Uh, we have here the homepage of the IATA. And here is the homepage of the ICAO. Uh, if you're interested in diving deeper into it, all the links will be in the description. Uh, here we are. Uh, as you see, the IATA code is different from the CARE, uh, not from the CARE, from the ICAO code. Um, and this is because this flight is uh, either scheduled or unknown. Typically, this number will be the same than this number. It's not always the case, but normally it is. Um, if you go back... Uh, by the way, we want to use this number here. Uh, can't I go back? I can. And if we will have a look at the uh, Cape Air flight that already landed, if we find one, care who or where are you? Wow, this took ages. Um, so here's one, uh, and you see, um. This identifier is quite different. Uh, it's a lot shorter. Mm. Mm, no. Nope. Yeah, it is. Uh, and here you see the number is the same. So you're best off uh, using flights that already landed and not are uh, just scheduled or estimated to a certain time. Okay, that's that. Let's copy over a couple of flights. I will use the 8 o'clock hour, as I said. And I simply copy it into a LibreOffice calc sheet. And I will do the same, whoops, wrong monitor, for the departures. For this example, I pretty much don't care if they are delayed, scheduled, estimated or cancelled. We will work with it. So, I also copy them over. And now we just need to bring them in the right format so the game understands it. As you see, I cut down the list uh, from Flight Radar or Flight Radar 24 quite a bit. So we have two arriving flights and one departing flight. That will do for this example. And for the first flight, we see. It's a Delta flight. It's coming from Philadelphia. This is the aircraft type. This is the ICAO code, but in the schedule we only use IATA codes. And we know it is it landed. At Eight o'clock and three minutes. <coughs> uh, okay, uh, let's hop over to the second screen. Um, since I said we will use the text editor, or I will do that, um, I'm using Context as my editor of choice. You can use any text editor you like, uh, the Windows editor or whatever. Important is just that the editor saves the file in plain text and 
not in a formatted file like uh, rich text or something like that. Okay, uh, I will open two windows, two instances of the editor. And in the first window, I will put all the files from our cables folder. And in the second, from the copy of the original, I will use the airlines, airplanes and airports folder. Or not folder, it's, these are files. Okay, here's our schedule. As I said, there will be two arrivals and one departure. So let's have a quick look. Um, we will start with the airport. Um, this is Philadelphia, where the flight is coming from. So the IATA code is PHL. And we will put it in our schedule. Problem is, uh, the game doesn't know about Philadelphia because our airports file is pretty empty. So, from the copy of the original, we will search for PHL. And I usually use a space behind. Um, simple reason I can show you. Um, you should always search from the top and not from the cursor. Um, for example, if we search for SAV, then he will find, yeah, every everything where an SAV is in, and we don't like that. Instead, we use a space, and then he usually finds the right airport for us. But in our case, it's PHL. I will cut that and put it in our airport file. Um, I will cut it and not only copy it, because if this file grows, uh, yeah, it's hard to, to keep track. And if I now search here for PHL, you can't find it. So I know it is very likely it is already in my airport file. Okay, back to the schedule. We have the airport. Next is the aircraft type. Uh, the AITO codes for the airports are, uh, have uh, three characters. Same for the aircraft. The airline has two. And this is a flight number or numerical identifier, which has up to four numbers or digits. Okay, the aircraft type. You know, in this case, it's an E75S. So, what the heck is that? Let's search for it. Here's our airlines file, and let's type in E75S. This will not lead to a result. Um, Airplanes, please. But also here, E75S. The program will not find something like that just because this particular model is not in the game. So we need to search for an alternative. And the easiest way is to just don't use the S in the end. And here we'll see, and this is a flight we can work with, or an aircraft we can work with. Same as in the airports file, I will cut it and put it in our airplanes file. And here you see is the ICAO code, 
this is the iata code we are using for the schedule so we are copying it i'm putting it here in our schedule file the next is the airline and this is a delta flight so we use dl Come on. And since this flight stays a Delta flight, we will put it in here as well. Again, the game doesn't know about Delta, so we need to put the airline in. And here it's pretty convenient to put a comma behind, so DL comma. I'm cutting this line, put it in here, and we are almost good to go. Next is the flight number. I like to say flight number, but actually it's a numerical identifier. And this is uh, 6033. Oops, so we put it in here. And our first flight is ready. So we quickly do the next one. It's a JetBlue coming from Santo Domingo. It's an Airbus 320 landed 804. I haven't touched the times yet. And B6 in this case because the IATA code is always has always two characters so don't use this as a numerical identifier so B6 is the code and A30 the identifier together this will become our course on later so Back here, it is SDQ. We will search for it here. Cut it, put it in here. Next, it's an Airbus 320. So, off to the airplanes. A320, here it is, cut it, put it in here, use the IATA code, in this case it's 320, we put it in here, it's in JetBlue flight, so B6, Cut it, put it in our airlines file, and we're good to go. Next thing we, do, we do is put in the flight number, the three I'm lying, eight three zero. And now we're we will take a look at the times. So I like to start with an um, arriving flight and I like to have it one minute before the hour starts. So typically it will spawn at 7.59 but it will take about a minute uh, until you will see it on your radar so the game will pretty much start at 8 o'clock. The next one is uh, zero 04. Okay. Um, when it comes to the times, the first time is always the arriving time, the second time always the departing time. The game doesn't care about this time, so you can leave it at 12 o'clock. 
important is just that you don't confuse them and switch these times. So for the arriving flights it's the first time and for the departing flights it's the second time that is important. I have no idea what this one is for. Um, you will find uh, something like that in the GA and local traffic file. Uh, we will get to that later. But here, uh, yeah, I don't think that is something that is relevant. Maybe it's just uh, a zero for flight doesn't spawn and a one for the flight to be spawned. Okay. Let's go to our arriving flight. It's an American airline flight. So the double A is our code. This is a number. It is kind of, kind of not coming from. It's going to Washington. So DCA. And it's an Airbus 319. Not 3. One nine, whatever, three nineteen. That <laughs> was on the back of my mind, uh, my head, and couldn't find its way to my mouth. So let's type it quickly in. Flight is going to Washington. It is an Airbus 319. It's an American Airlines flight. And the flight number is 2173. And that's basically it. Um, best is you don't use uh, any empty lines. So we will delete that. But I always have one empty line as the last line. So. Yeah, I make sure the game cuts the file here. Now we can save it and have our first test. Before we can test our schedule, we need to copy our new files into the game and it is pretty simple. This is the cables folder of the game. This is our cables folder. And we're taking all the files except the terminal file. This we do in about two minutes. And copy them over and replace them in the cables folder of the game. Then we can start Tower 3D Pro. This is way too big. That is much better. I accidentally clicked on start. Oh, well, that's okay. Eight o'clock was already set. And as you see, we do have a problem. I did this on purpose, normally. <laughs> I did it by mistake, well, I do it by mistake. Um, but in this time it was on purpose, uh, just to show you what you can do when the game does not load. Um, in this case it is stuck at 54%. So 
so we can close it. It will not do anything. And I quickly show you what's the problem. Here we are in our games directory. Um, there you find the Tower 3D data folder. And in here is an output block file. It's a text file. You can open it with a text editor. Uh, or maybe not. Hello, here it is. And it is not. What's going on? Come on. Here it is. Okay. Uh, we can scroll down to the bottom. And we will find an error message here. This is our error code. And in this case, it is not very obvious. Um, that's because I choose to have this error. Um, normally, it will tell you that an aircraft type could not be found or an airline could not be found. And what you do then is simply look in your airlines folder if all airlines are in here or all airplanes are in there. And in this case, if all airports are in and they are definitely not because we forgot to import Boston. And we have to do that. So we close the output block. Back to the Boston folder. We are searching for Boston in the airports file, of course. Cut it out here. We're putting it into our airports file and save it. I like to have it as the first in the first line, but uh, you don't have to. Okay. Then again, let's copy. Oh, we don't need to copy all the files, just the airport file. Copy it in the game directory. And let's start Tower 3D Pro again. Alright. And if you now click on start, you will see the game will load smoothly and perfectly. Hopefully. Tower. American 2173 ah, requesting is. push and start. This is our departure, our American flight. Going to Washington. And over here, this is our Delta flight. We will see in just a second. Tower, Delta 6033 Coming green with runway to right. Perfect. Schedule is working. So, not that much to do left. There are just two things left we haven't talked about. One is the GA and local traffic file. Uh, as you see, I have put in one flight already, and we will quickly go through these options. Um, the first thing you will notice is that there's only one time, so not like in the schedule file where you have the departing and the arriving time. Um, but as in the schedule, um, the structure is pretty much the same. Um, the first uh, airport is where the plane is starting from and 
the second one is where it's arriving. So in this case, it's a departure. It's starting from the Boston airport and it's going to Martha's Vineyard, is it, I believe. Uh, and this will happen at 8.02. If we want to turn this uh, into an arrival, then we simply swap these airports out. To swap out, is that the thing? I don't think so. We swap it. Um, we should not forget to... Uh, or first, uh, it is a little confusing because, uh, as you see, this is a, a Cessna caravan and uh, it's using the IATA code and for the airports, unlike in the schedule file, it is using the ICAO codes. I have no idea why it is that way, but uh, that's how it is. So, if we want to uh, use this flight, we should also include the airport and of course the airplane. Good. Mm. The next one is um, the call sign. Um, here we have three options for um, a touch and go, a stop and go, and this one is for low approach. We can set this to one, or maybe we set this touch and go to one. Uh, but I normally don't do that, or I actually never do that, because I haven't found any indicator in the game uh, that this plane wants to perform a touch and go, so it just says, hello, here I am, and you say, perfect, please land on runway whatever. It lands, and um, then it's done, no matter what you type in here. So I would leave it at zero. This is a call sign uh, how you say it for the speech recognition and this is actually what the speech recognition is looking for. So in this case 450 Kilo, um, because you don't say this November. You can change this into I don't know um, Hotel Fox Kilo. And the game will still recognize this call sign when you say Hotel Fox Kilo. Of course, we don't need another airline because all the information we need is in this file. Okay, now we can save it. And the last thing is the terminal file. This is a setup uh, from the real traffic add-on and we can use it or we want to be more precise and look up how things are in real life. Uh, for Boston it's pretty accurate, um, but uh, here we are at the Boston Logan International homepage and you find an interactive map and all the airlines where you can have a look and say maybe this uh, boutique air you know it is arriving and starting from terminal b in this case you would uh, have your Boutique ICAO code and put it into terminal B. For now, I'm just going with um, this terminal file, the uh, the add-on 
gives us. Uh, yeah, don't need to do that right now. And I will open up our terminal and in another instance our airlines file. With uh, three airlines we are using right now, so I just copy the uh, what is it the ICAO code um, and search for it here. So we know Delta is terminal A, so I put it in here. search here. JetBlue is on terminal C, peer B, and also terminal C, peer C. So we will put it in here. And the American flight is terminal B. I said, okay, we have to search for it. American, terminal B on the peer. We don't need any other airlines. Our general aviation is already assigned to the general aviation terminal. So we're done here. We can save it. Close it. And now copy all these files into the Kavos folder of the game. We replace the files and we are good to go for another test. Okay, the game loaded. Our flights are coming in. Everything looks good. What if there is an airport or maybe an airline we want to use but that is not in the game already? So we can simply edit. Um, we can't edit aircrafts or we can edit them but we can't add them. Um, but we can do it with um, airports and with airlines. First let's do an airport and let's say we are searching, let's jump over on to Wikipedia. Uh, let's search for Fort Miss Regional. Um, there are a lot of websites you can search for airports and IATA and ICAO codes. But in this case, we will stick with Wikipedia. Uh, we know the IATA code is FSM. So we will put it in here. And the name is for Miss Regional. Uh, and if we go back, I have no idea how you shorten Arkansas. Um, I would just leave it blank. Don't want to type in something stupid like here for Massachusetts. It's MA, but Arkansas, I have no idea. I would just type in USA. It is not that important. Uh, the game is looking for the IATA code and the ICAO code. And of course, the longitude and latitude. Um, this is the next we will do here on Wikipedia. We already have the coordinates, but they are not in a decimal number. 
So the easiest way to do that is to use Google Maps. Um, here we type in uh, KFSM. Here it is. Uh, maybe we need the airport, please. There it is. And we can simply click and create a pin. And here we get our decimal numbers. So it's north and west. And 35.33 and minus 94.36. Oops, wrong button. Here we go. So we will type it in. It is 35.33 and this is north. And we don't use a minus, we just use 19.36 west. And the ICAO code is KFSM. That's it, we can save it. And now this airport is in the game. Um, the coordinates are not that important. It just um, as far as I understand it uh, after you hand the plane over to departure um, it will use its coordinates to direct the uh, fly to, into this direction. The next is an airline. Um, in this case, uh, yeah, you pretty much do the same thing. Search for it and you have the ICAO code. Uh, let's say uh, it's a Lufthansa flight. The call sign will be Lufthansa. Um, it is, uh, I don't know, oops, unlike in the uh, airport file, um, the name is not that important. I could just use this and it will work fine. The game only looks for the ICAO code, the IATA code and the call sign. There are some limitations when it comes to the schedule and this is uh, the game will not spawn two flights in the same minute uh, for arrivals and I believe not more than three flights uh, for the departures in one minute. So. When you are creating the schedule and you want to use the real, real times, um, maybe there are some flights that uh, have landed uh, at the same minute. Um, maybe there are, I don't know, six, seven, eight flights that are departing uh, on the same minute. Um, I don't recommend you to do that. Uh, just alter the times a little bit so the game understand it and work better. Uh, as a general rule is uh, for the rivals two minutes uh, separation if you're using one runway and one minute if you're using multiple runways. For the departures um, I typically use up to three flights within one minute. Of course not all the time because that would be much too busy. So here you can play a little bit. Um, I normally don't stick to the real times. Uh, I use the real flights, but 
when it comes to the times. Uh, I write the schedule so in the way that I think uh, it is playable and it is fun. Not all aircraft uh, will have liveries and not all aircraft will have liveries for all the airlines. So if you encounter some white planes and you don't like that, uh, there's a simple way around. Um, we are here in the official forum um, and you will find, I will link or I will write the link down in the description. Uh, you will find this thread by Pedantic G and he provides this uh, real color aircraft master list. Um, we can't download it right now because I'm not signed in. Um, if you click on it, you will see that this attachment is not available. Uh, I guarantee you it has not been removed uh, and permissions are fine. Uh, yeah, it is uh, right here. It, it would be better if there was, uh, if it would state that uh, please sign in to download or something like that. Um, you can sign in and download the file. I already have done it and here it is. Uh, we will use the second sheet, the full RC list, to search for deliveries. And no, here I want to go. Um, and if we have a look in the schedule, um, we can see if um, there's a Delta livery for this aircraft model. So for the IATA code, we simply use DL for Delta, click OK, and then we can search for an E1 Oh, we don't need to search for it. We can see that actually there isn't a livery for this aircraft type. Okay, that's bad, but also good. So we can see how we can change that. Um, you simply swap the aircraft. So let's say you have a real color for, I don't know, Atlanta, Boston, and that's it. Then these are the aircraft types that do have liveries for Delta. So here I would say we are changing it to 737. That is pretty easy because for the Boeing 737 the ATA code is 737. And now this flight will have a livery but also it's a different aircraft. So here you need to decide, do you want to be more real or more colorful? If you do that, just don't forget in your airplane file, uh, don't forget to put in the Boeing 737. And that's basically it. Before we are coming to my hidden agenda, sort of, um, please let me say that uh, the way I've shown you uh, is how I create the schedules, especially the clear out schedules. Um, this doesn't mean that it is the only way or the best way to do it, so if you are using another way or have some insights you want to share, um, please do so in the comment section. I would be more than happy. And yeah, when it comes to my hidden agenda, sort of, 
uh, it is that I like to ask you to create a schedule for me. Um, don't feel pressured, uh, just if you have the time and if you're really up for it. Uh, if you think that is boring and stupid, um, don't do it. Um, if you think it could be interesting and you uh, have fun doing it, uh, please do so. Um, just create the schedule, uh, make a zip file out of it, uh, and I normally have this uh, readme first file in here. Uh, just some basic information which uh, real traffic version is used and these things. Um, then you can cre create a zip file and zip compressed folder. Give it a useful name. Maybe this, maybe your name. And then you can upload it to a file hoster. Uh, I like to use workupload.com. So here you can simply drag and drop your file. Then click on share now. And just write down the link in the comment section. I will, yeah, then play the schedule, record a video, and we can see how I managed to play your schedule. Uh, we can delete this file because it is not a very good schedule containing four flights in total. But yeah, if you're up for it, then uh, do it. Uh, challenge me, write a cool schedule. I will try it and we will see it in a video here on YouTube. Okay, that's all I have to say for now. I hope I haven't forgotten something. I don't think so. Uh, if so, uh, please let me know in the comments. I will answer it there. Okay, uh, now my tongue is tired and uh, for, yeah, it's performing all these weird stunts in my mouth uh, trying to pronounce the <laughs> English words. Uh, so let me say thanks for your attention and that you're still with me that long in the video. And yeah, have a good day and we'll see you next time in Tower 3D Pro. Bye.